Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. First off, how do you like the new background? I think it's kind of a vibe in here, but I understand that not everyone's taste is gonna be a mix between an arcade and your mom's basement. At any rate, uh, today we're checking out Flux Context, and that's context with a K. Think of this as a brand new architecture and framework for advanced image generation developed by Black Forest Labs, sort of as a competitor to the GPT-40 native image generation. It accomplishes very similar use cases or image gen slash editing tasks, but under the hood they are very much different. If you want to see an open source replica of the native 4.0 image gen, check out my last video. This is our initial input image. It's a photo of a girl with a snowflake block in her face. We simply ask it with natural language, remove the thing from her face, and it's able to hallucinate, generate a face that matches pretty realistically. We don't know what the initial face actually looks like, but I think it does a pretty good job at removing that snowflake. Real quick, we'll toss this in GPT-40 native image gen. Same exact task, remove the thing from her face. I can't edit this image as requested because it violates our content policies. Good grief. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and try this through the API playground. And for a quick and dirty test between these models, OpenAI's is more of a recreation with all of the same facial features. Flux is more of a direct image edit. This obviously preserves a little bit more of that original image, but this is definitely of a higher overall quality. So it kind of depends on your use case here, just judging basic facial reconstruction from object removal. Anyways, the tech demo goes on to put her on a city street. I think that does a great job, although this does feel a little bit more on the reconstructive side of things rather than direct image manipulation. So it's kind of taking all those same facial features and transplanting this girl somewhere else. It works pretty darn well, but is it the same exact person down to each specific little detail? Probably not. I see some people get pretty picky surrounding that in the comments. I do think that this reconstruction is better though than what we just saw from GPT-40 native image gen. Anyways, we can now take that same image and do another edit, a fourth change, boom, cover the whole place in snow, and she is also covered in snow. I love the detail on the face. It looks like she really just stood there for 15 minutes and let snow collect all over her face in a comedic fashion. It's a direct raw implementation. You can see the difference between the images is very, very low. This, again, seems more like image editing rather than reconstruction. Seems to be capable of both. Here's a case for a little bit more pure but very specific character consistency. We've got this bird with a VR headset and his beak pokes through the VR headset, which is pretty funny, uh, but then he's sitting enjoying a beer. It gives him these little glove-like hands. Now there are two of those birds. It duplicates him, again keeping the same glove-like hands, putting them in the movie theater. This one kind of changes the hands a little bit, and what's interesting is it kind of keeps the bar background overall, I think, and just puts movie theater seats in there. Then they're going grocery shopping, but still overall really consistent on the VR beak style headset and the body shape and style of the characters. The art style also is very consistent between all of these, which is something that OpenAI can struggle a little bit with. And finally, the birds celebrating a successful launch. This thing's also pretty great with text. So is GPT-40 native image gen, but with a simple prompt change the you had me at beer logo to you had me at context logo does a great job keeping most of the details in the background and not regenerating a whole image. It really does feel like a modification of the original image, even sliding over that at right here to the side perfectly, which is pretty crazy. Obviously, some of these finer details are still a little bit mushy. It is AI after all, but this is pretty darn impressive. Setting to a nightclub does this pretty well. A little bit mushy on the hands over here, and then finally putting it in the background and a person is taking a selfie. From these super basic demos, it seems very promising, kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a lot of ways with the GPT-40 native image gen. I want to get a little bit more hands-on though, for sure. Now, Black Forest Labs does indeed provide more examples as well as actual benchmarks for this. I really do think that hands-on testing is going to be more beneficial for you guys to get an idea of how this thing is 
is. But for those of you that are a little bit more interested in the technical side and the numbers of it all, they've got that as well as a full technical paper. If you want to dive a little bit more into the weeds of how this thing works under the hood, it is not your traditional diffusion solution. It is also not your auto regressive LLM chatbot like GPT-4 Omni. This is its own beast by Black Forest Labs, and I gotta say, it really seems like they crushed it with this one. So your first source to mess around with this thing yourself is going to be the playground from BFL, literally just called Flux Playground. Let's go ahead and add a reference image. As I typically like to do, I'll just grab an image of myself, make an image of this guy on the moon in a lemon-themed spacesuit. Send that right off. By the way, to get access to this, it is completely free, but you have to sign in with a Google account. Wow, the generations are returning very quickly. First impressions, definitely a pretty decent amount of detail. This one absolutely looks like me, and I gotta say, the spacesuit, while not fully lemon-themed, at least it is yellow, and we are definitely on the moon. Some of these gens, though, like this one, this guy doesn't really look like me. He might have some similarities to my facial features overall, but it is not the same guy. So, it sometimes seems like you can take a couple of re-rolls here to get a perfect output or a perfect character replication, but this is pretty good. Wow, this one's also pretty darn good too. Got that yellow spacesuit, and then finally this one. I think this one also looks a little bit less like me, but out of the four hits here, we've got two usable ones. One thing I'm also noticing is that these are incredibly similar across all of each other in terms of composition of the image, but the fact that they are all definitely on the moon, but that definitely isn't Earth in the background, you know what I mean? I guess it could be Earth, and some of these, like, that kind of seems like Earth, but but that is definitely like a moon or something. The thing I've noticed a lot of times when you try to generate like literally anyone or anything on the moon, it'll put something that's supposed to be the earth in the background, but it's typically also the moon because of how many images the AI is trained on of people taking photos of the moon. At any rate, for a first quick fire with a simple prompt, that is great. If I liked one of these, for example, I could click edit on it and I can continue off of this image and edit it more. The one thing though is apparently the more and more you edit a photo off of itself, it will eventually degrade and turn into a mushy AI blobby mess. The images get deep fried over time. So something to keep in mind. In this user interface, though, I actually like this playground so far. You can highlight certain areas. Like, let's highlight this over here, and we'll say, turn this into the earth in the background. See how that goes? Okay, all right, it's definitely regenning the whole image for the most part. We definitely are seeing some image degradation over time. This still kind of looks like the moon, and this looks less like me. This one, I think, preserved things a little bit better, though, overall. Still looks like me, kind of a little bit crunchy though, definitely see that image deep frying happening, but added the earth quite successfully in the background, and the rest of these, eh, not really a huge fan. One pretty usable one though, for sure. I could then take this, put it into VO3, and actually create something with it, you know? In fact, let's do that right now. That earth in the background, yeah, we're gonna make it explode. Anyways, here is our VO3 generation. Oh my god, the Earth is crashing into the moon? Oh, that's not good. That is not good. He's just like, hey, and then he's, the explosion happens. Oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> VO3 is not great at keeping me very consistent. As it zooms in, it kind of warps and changes my facial features. But, I don't know, for a quick and dirty, consistent character video workflow using VO3, uh, Flux 1 context kind of kills it. More experiments need to be done, though. Yeah, uh, but here's the deal. It seems like, at least in this interface, I can only upload one image at a time. Something you don't have to deal with with GPT-40 native image gen. Here's something interesting, though. In the model selector itself on this, We've been using the Pro model, we could switch to Max, which apparently has better quality. So, let's start off like we did last time, just upload a simple photo of me. Highly detailed image of this exact person eating a mint chocolate chip ice cream cone on Mount Fuji. Maybe it'll preserve a little bit more detail. Okay, well that is absolutely not me. Maybe we turn the safety tolerance down a little bit. Try that again. There we go, turning the safety down worked. Looks a lot more like me, even getting that chair in the background oftentimes. This, I would say, is probably the best iteration. Definitely a mint chocolate chip ice cream cone. The overall quality, yeah, it, it leaves a little bit to be desired, 
GPT-40 native image gen is a little bit better in that regard, but it works. We'll edit this further though. Spider-Man is to the left eating strawberry ice cream. And I guess I'll highlight that specific area right over here. Send that through. Whoa, request moderated because of Spider-Man. Ugh. It's a little upsetting. We're gonna go with another consistent style character. I wanna use this image, which is actually a generation by GPT-40 native image gen. You will notice this guy has one arm, and that is super, super difficult for these models to understand. It's impressive that it was able to generate one full intact arm and one missing arm in the same person. Can Flux keep this consistent? That is going to be the challenge. This man is a lemon salesman in ancient Egypt. Make sure that safety is off. Let's send that on through. Oof, okay, one of them got moderated and the rest of these generations, definitely not the same guy, let alone a dude that is missing his arm. Definitely not as diverse or malleable in terms of what you can actually get up to just in the basic Flux playground. But here's the thing with Flux, it's not made by OpenAI. So there is a level of community sharing here going on. This is deployable in a number of ways. It has already been deployed in places like this. This is on replicate.com and this is a series of Flux context apps made by the community. More open models can be a wonderful thing. We've got a uh, Renaissance painting. We've got face too many contexts. I believe these are all fine tunes of that context workflow. Here is an experimental model that uses two image references instead of just one. Already an upgrade over what we previously saw. Impossible scenarios, that's kind of similar to the demo I started out with. For image restoration, we've got different filters. Definitely some pretty cool little apps. Alright, let's start off with becoming a character in any style. Let's grab an input image. This dude is going to be our input image. Ultra high def version of Wallow from our Discord server. By the way, discord.gg slash mattvidpro, link in the description. Hands down, the best little AI community you'll run into. For style, let's go ahead and try Lego. That'll be a fun one. And we'll keep the persona at random. This will change you to a vampire or a samurai or a demon, all kinds of stuff. Preserve the background. I like that they have these options now in these custom apps. Yes, we'll preserve the outfit and the background. And I suppose if we're doing that, we can set the persona to none. Uh, let's give it a run. All right, let's see what we end up with here. Boom, there he goes in full Lego style. I'm actually really impressed with this. This little app is already better than what we were just using. It seemed to struggle, I think, a little bit with the camera, like turning that into Lego, but it definitely turned the high def wallow profile pick into a Lego variant. I mean, that is a Lego character, no doubt. Kept the earrings though, kept those eyebrows and that specific facial style. Mighty impressive. Even the hand is like shockingly similar. Uh, pretty much perfection all the way around, I gotta say. That's crazy. See, the community made stuff is always just so baller. Like, alright, let's keep Wallow in here. Let's try it doing Simpson style. Leave the rest the same. Okay, pretty good. The Simpson style, I think, is a little bit more of a difficult crossover, but again, the eyebrows are accurate. The, got the earrings, the clothing. The whole deal is pretty good. A little bit of home or Simpson-ness going on over there, but not as impressive as Lego, still real cool. Let's now go full anime, and we're also going to change him into a different persona. We'll say random. We'll change the background, but preserve the outfit. Oh, wow, you can see it did all these different kinds of characters. Not sure what this one's supposed to be. Definitely an anime art style. I think it nailed that pretty well. I think this is obviously vampire. I don't know, what is this? Cyborg, I suppose? I think this might be ninja? I don't know. Still pretty, pretty awesome overall though. All right, let's go ahead and try image combination next. So this is two input images instead of just one. We'll keep this flux context image, but I'm going to change the image of the girl to this random image I found of a guy from the 90s holding onto a bee. And you can see it does have a text prompt as well. Put the man into a white t-shirt with the text on it. Let's change the t-shirt from white to pink. Let's see how it goes. I think the real question will be, is he still going to be holding a B? And, oh wow, it did pretty good. I think it actually expanded the bottom of the image to flesh it out a little bit, but he's definitely still holding on to the B. Pink shirt, flux context, that's solid, man. That's real good. Consistent characters. I gotta say, I think these apps are the way to go here in Replicate. These user-made bills are working. That is, that is pretty flawless. Okay, let's go for something else. Me as an input image, and then we're gonna grab this little 
Matt Vidpro AI mock-up I made at some point. Put the man into a t-shirt with the text on it. Say, professional photo shoot. Sure, let's see. Boom, there I am wearing my very own Matt Vidpro AI shirt. It did a pretty good job capturing my character overall. Definitely see the professional lighting. Gave me definitely a little bit more of a stubble though, for sure. The hair is super accurate. The eyes are good as well. Eyebrows and everything. It looks like me. For sure, very, very close. I will say though, it screwed up one particular little part of the actual t-shirt, the part where it says AI, it cut the eye off. But it's almost perfect otherwise. The man has his tongue out and he's wearing a top hat. Push the model a little farther. Ooh, okay, so it definitely listened to me. Again, very close with the t-shirt, still missing the eye here. This guy kinda looks like me. I think that the eyebrows, maybe the eyes a little bit, need some work for sure. This guy is close to me, but there's definitely something a little bit off, especially having them side by side. Pretty good at listening, though, to your instructions. Series of portrait photos from a single image. This could definitely be fun. Five images, black background. Let's try our one-armed friend here. I have a feeling this is not gonna work, but let's give it a shot. Okay, definitely the portraits. That's the same guy, I would say. Like, this guy was actually invented for a real movie scenario purpose. So, overall, yeah. See, it definitely does look pretty close to him. And I like the different angles and everything, but it is definitely regenerating that arm for him. This is, this is the real tough part. It's like those small, subtle details in the characters that can really make a difference. And AI models generalize, so... Most people don't have a missing arm. Just grows that sucker right back. I'm sure he's happy about it, finally having two arms again. But for our scenarios to turn this into image to video, for example, an actual use case making a short film, this is not what we would want. I will say, though, in terms of pricing, this is definitely a lot cheaper than GPT-40 native image gen. But this image is right out of... GPT-40 native image gen, so it depends really on your use case. If you need those finer, crazy details like this, missing an arm, you're going to want to stick with the best of the best, but Flux Context is a lot cheaper, it's a lot quicker, and swallows up a lot of the same use cases. And just to kind of show you the real difference between these two, we'll do this same exact prompt, which was another failure in the OG Flux Playground, and we will try it in the OpenAI one instead. Man, you can see, GPT-40 native image gen, Definitely turns this guy into a salesman. It did grow his arm back on this side. Swap to the next image, though, and you'll see it absolutely kept that consistency. It, this is really the only known image model that I've found can actually represent this character consistently with the one arm. It's really intriguing. It's got to be down to that auto-regressive design in the background, but this takes way longer and it is way, way more expensive. So if you don't need something like this... Flux definitely can be a great option. Uh, there you can see it did it again. Missing the arm, selling the lemons, ancient Egypt, and this one, <laughs> pretty close. Definitely still has the one arm, but he's holding this lemon, and the lemon basket is floating mysteriously. Overall, this is another great release from Black Forest Labs. Pretty great, consistent characters, as well as pretty awesome character editing. And... Pretty huge potential for the open community at large. Lots of great modifications have been made, and some awesome workflows are already out in the wild. That Replicate one's going to be linked down below. I think with a little bit more work and effort from the community, this could be turned into a really, really nice interface for working with Image Gen especially if you want to do consistent characters or consistent scenes. Fine-tuning the model yourself might be the move in that scenario, but websites like Replicate make it very easy to do so. I would say this is definitely better than the recent bagel I took a look at, but under the hood, they are very different, even though they kind of overlap a lot of use cases. That is going to be it from me for today, though. Check out the description for all of the links from this video, and of course, if you make anything cool with this brand new Flux Context, share it with my Discord server. Throw it in general chat, or even better, the actual image gen sharing chat. We would love to see what you're up to. Peace out, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.